the wraps space with brand innovators here at the Cannes Film Festival. It's our first year doing this, although hardly our first year talking to significant figures in the film industry, which we like to do all the time. And we especially like to talk to women about their work. So it brings me great pleasure to welcome the actress and director, Judith Godresh, to our space. Welcome, good Judith. Thank you. So we're here to talk about your new film, mm -hmm. Me Too, Mwausi. So for those of you who have not seen Judith's film, it is a beautiful short film that played on opening night at the festival, right? Yeah, the Un Certain Regard. In Un Certain Regard section. Yeah. And it's a testament and a very poetic one to the people who have, I'll say women, who have survived sexual misconduct or sexual assault. Um, and I guess not just in the film industry, it's people from all over, right? Yeah, and I, I, ha I have to say it's mostly people that are not in, in the film industry and a, a lot of uh, incest, basically. And oh, I wow. mean, uh, uh, yeah, majority of uh, these m women's and men uh, were victims of incest, which uh, oh my goodness, it was very surprising when I received all those testimonies and letters. Uh, you know, it's almost as if I was discovering. Uh, I, I it sort of you know gave me a, a vision of the world and the country I live in that was very shocking. So let's back up and explain to our listeners, how you started this film. Um, you have been on quite a journey yourself, um, having had a lifelong career as an actress uh, from, a, from your childhood, really, from yeah. your as a teenager, beginning as mm -hmm. a teenager, and then making a decision to call out your own sexual abuser yeah. late, late, Recently, yeah, exactly. It took me uh, almost thirty-five years, uh, yeah, to speak out, and and uh, it was a very, it was a long journey. It's like a puzzle, I should say. I moved to America. I sort of ran away from you know, the French film industry, and moved to America with my kids, and 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 started writing a TV show a few years ago that I um, ended up doing in France. You know, produced by A twenty four. And um, as I was writing it, I realized that, you know, the story of this French woman going back to her country, an actress, could not be sincere and, um, you know, um, honest if I wasn't telling some of my childhood in this industry because I was a child actor. But yet, I didn't want it to become like a Me Too show and I was very worried about saying any names and na naming anyone. Uh, so I did this show and it went to the Deauville Film Festival, but I still kept, you know, my sort of like, uh, I had decided I would not name anyone. And then, you know, life sort of played a game, like surprised me, like, you know, life decided for me almost like I found myself in front of images of this one of the director that abused me when I was 14 and I found images of him that were sent to me by a woman and, and it, it was a documentary about a psychoanalyst and this, this director was interviewed and watching this man talk about me like me as a 14 year old girl, the way he was speaking about me was just something that, you know, um, just basically shocked me in, in, in sort of a, you know, such a, um, like it's almost if it, like everything I had repressed came back and I suddenly could not handle it, like, and had to speak out. So interesting. That's such a common experience that I've heard over and over and over from women as the Me Too movement has unfolded. Women who've come forward decades later, they say they heard someone say something. They heard Harvey Weinstein deny one more time or even um, E. Jean Carroll, who brought the lawsuit against Donald Trump, 
she just couldn't bear to hear him deny that he had raped her one more time. That's well more than 30 years ago. That's like 50, you know, 45 years ago, whatever that happened. And so it's so interesting how for many women, and you included, that there's just a tipping point where you just say, no more. Yeah, and for me, you know, it was really also the fact that you could see in these documentaries images of me in a movie as a child, I mean, as a very young woman, and it's, you know, you don't really look at yourself or think of yourself with a lot of compassion, and when you repress things, you know, there's also a feeling of guilt and, and shame uh, when you're a victim. It's not something you want to be known for or, you know, you're not walking the streets of Los Angeles like telling, you know, I was a victim in my childhood or, or you know, so, but it's bizarre. Like there's a moment where something, you know, life comes back knocking at your door. My daughter kept saying that my show, Icon of French Cinema, was like a best friend who knows more about you than you do and comes and say, you can do this. Like... You know, almost like the show, and it's true, it's, it's really the story of this uh, TV show that sort of decided, it, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a quite a crazy journey. And, um, and I recently discussed a little bit on emails with uh, Anita Hill, who I was introduced to and, and, and saw the, the short film. And, and, you know, we talked about, um, actually, she sent me something she just wrote about the Harvey Weinstein uh, because uh, I was one of the women who spoke out in the New York Times. And uh, it's, it's quite interesting how, you know, in a way there's, I think, a really beautiful, um, you know, sorority and, like, strength that can come from all over the world. Like, you know, if there's anything good about what we went through, it's that. It's like this, the power of knowing you're not alone. I want to talk about the film, but I also want to talk about a particular moment that um, Americans might be less familiar with. Everyone in Europe knows that you spoke out at the Cesar Awards in February about the conspiracy, conspiracy of silence, let's say, in France against talking about sexual abuse. And your speech was very beautiful. And Thank you beautifully written and beautifully delivered and very powerful. What made you decide to do that? Um, I think it was more about like not doing it once I was asked. I didn't really want to do it, but what if I didn't do it? <laughs> you know, it, it was about being brave and I think like there was something about, in a way I thought that, you know, if in a place like that where everyone's is so dressed up and looking at their best and you know on a pedestal like on the you know uh it's such a mystifying place right if you are at the cesar it means you're someone in the world um and i thought you know to go there and just talk about um what's going on in, in this society in the french cinema industry but also like just in you know as a as a reflection of what's happening in france and you know I felt like, okay, let's just do that. I, I, you know, maybe I should be brave, brave enough to do it. And I feel that, you know, I, I've been trying to understand why somehow this speech touched a lot of women that are not from this industry at all. And I think that maybe it is because when you're on such a, in such a glamorous place, in a place where people are admiring everyone that's there, and suddenly there's someone who has this privilege who says something so, um, you know, something that's not a privilege, something that's um, a pain and something that, you know, is very similar to everyone else's, like what they went through. I feel that maybe people th can say, oh my God, if she says that in such a place, if she is able to tell her story where in a place where she should be the most like, you know, smooth and glamorous and actress, you know, have an actress like a star attitude if this pain and this story has a place there maybe mine has a place also in the lights like it's how do you bring reality to um to the light you know well i think also what's worth pointing out is that you've when you talk about something that's so far in the past it's especially difficult because you feel like 
I survived it. I got past it. I have a life. And so I, I just think that it's especially hard to dredge that up and relive that, uh, quite apart from the fact that people will then associate you with that thing when they see you for a long time to come. And that's not the totality of who you are, and it's not the totality of what you are and what your life means. But in the society that we live in, that's, that's what will happen. And you know that that's what's going to happen. So, I, I mean, I think it's... Of course. But also, I mean, you know, this is about, we're talking about power here. And we're talking right. about saying something that goes against power, against what's being established, against omerta and immunity. And so basically, you're exactly like one more piece of sand that's going to stop the system from going smoothly. So you're somehow, you know, uh, positioning yourself as an enemy, a potential enemy of the system. Like the system exists and is the way it is because it's working for m a majority of people. Otherwise, it would be different. So, you know, it's, it's also this. It's like, can I go that far and sort of like, you know, position myself in a place where I know I'll, I'll, I'm risking my, you know, I'm obviously risking my career. And then the question is like, you know, if I'm not, if, if women my age... <laughs> Uh, are not risking that, what will happen to the young women and young actresses? Like, you know, you, you have to sort of like, I guess, uh, endorse some sort of responsibility, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the film a little bit. It is, it's a very beautiful film, as I said. And it, it's almost like a performance. It's almost like a, 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 some kind of dance in a way. Um, so it's not like a narrative film, just for those of you who haven't seen it yet. Uh, it's more uh, symbolic. In its, it's, a, it's a lot of women standing together and gesturing to one another. Uh, maybe you'll describe it better than me. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> you I mean, like, should definitely <laughs> see it because it should be seen rather than described. Yeah. But go ahead. I mean, it's a thousand of uh, women and men who wrote me out of the 5,000 and came to Paris to occupy this avenue with me, this, uh, this avenue of Paris that goes all the way to La Place de la Nation, which was a symbol, very symbolic for me. Um, and, you know, there's, it's a huge number of people in this avenue. And, and the idea was like, how do you direct a movie without directing uh, people as if they were actors? You know, uh, how do you not impose uh, emotions on their face? How do you not tell them what to... Uh, be like and how do you direct and use all the elements and the music and the sound and the image and dance and gesture without ever dominating who you're filming um, and also without you know this sort of hierarchy in the crew where you feel like it's such a um, some sort of aristocracy even in, in the crew like everyone is on the same level and uh, and we had a crew of incredible technicians that, and you know, people taking care of all these women's and men, and and basically, I wanted to use, you know, gesture, music, and dance, which is kind of what I put in everything I direct. I don't think I could do a movie or a show that doesn't involve music and dance, and and basically, you know, tell also with these gestures um, the things that children would do, like I'm cold, I'm scared, I can't speak. You know, and, and, and basically sort of go to the roots of gesture that we would, as a child, have done if we could or it, that we may have done. And uh, I wanted to use uh, a, a young actress, which is Tess Barthélemy, who happens to be my daughter. And she also is a dancer um, to navigate, you know, this crowd. And she's the only actress and sort of, in, you know, impersonate youth. And also by her move, she sort of, like takes in all these testimonies, all this abuse, and, and sort of like dance through it. And uh, I was very inspired by the beginning of the piano, the Jane Campion movie. You know, the very beginning, it's, uh, she, has a very, she has an intelligence that's very sensor, very sen sensor. Yeah, and uh, she has a way of really using the elements and anchoring them in some sort of raw truth but even th but but though she's always po it's always poetic, but it never goes like into some sort of cheesy poetry. You know, she has this raw truth to her art, but yet you still feel like you're 
in some sort of world that maybe does not exist, even though it does. And for me, that's like, I like to use, you know, all these elements as a director and, you know, the sound is really important. And, and, uh, and uh, yeah, I, Terrence Malick does that too. Uh, yeah, he loves to film. Yeah. yeah, I could I could see him being very much an inspiration. Is there so? Would you like the film to be distributed? It's it's most definitely not a conventional film. Yeah, it's not. But yeah, I I would want it to be distributed, and I would want it to travel the world. And and yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I think that also because it's not you know, like people like testimonies, people facing cameras, and it's not like sort of. I mean, I hope it's universal, and I hope that somehow, you know, like, this is why cinema is so important, and this is why it's, imp it's great to be here, is because even so, a movie will not be called Moi Aussi. I think that's what, you know, movies are made for. It's to feel less lonely and maybe somehow feel that, you know, recognize yourself in s some ways in, in films, and even when they're dramatic, even when there's lots of despairs in it, you could get out of the movie theater and feel better. So I hope that's what this movie somehow does, like gives a feeling of a hand that reaches out to you. It, it very much feels that way. I, I just wanted to clarify, you put out a call on Instagram? No, it's uh, after uh, I spoke out and after the Caesar speech. Yes. A lot, a lot of people reached texted out to me, you? Like, DM'd me on Instagram and I could not, I, it was just too much. Like I, I didn't know. And okay. I was also worried because some of those messages were so, seemed important, you know, and I didn't know how to handle this. So I created an email, email address to get all these. And I answered, I tried and obviously I'm not, um, perfect so I, I probably have missed and you know I'm still answering to some of them but I, I try to answer to most and um, hopefully all of them um, and I said to them I will think of a project that um, is an homage to you guys and so so this is all voluntary people yeah. who showed up to do this film I mean it's pretty amazing <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, pretty really. brave, and uh, I it's from them. You know, it's they are the the real heroes. They are the it's a crazy uh, the 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 strength you need to have to find yourself in a you know in such a setting. I mean, when you have being a victim and you suddenly you're surrounded by a crowd that you don't know. You know, and the truth is that we could only control so much. And they didn't know each other. All they absolutely not. They only knew that they were all there for the same reason. So then the, the close of the film is, um, so your daughter's walking towards the camera and then all of these thousand people start filing toward the camera as if to leave the stage or as if to leave the scene. And many of them are looking straight at the camera <laughs> and some of them are kind of just looking off, but you focus on their faces and their whole stories in their faces because some of them look defiant and some of them look sad and some of them look like they have no expression at all. But you can tell that every single one of them is a real person with a story. It's a kind of a crazy genius move to do as a director. Like, how did you, a, how did you think of that and what did you tell everyone to do? Nothing. Uh, I, you know, I had a narrative sort of like, I wrote this, the script and had this whole vision about, you know, the beginning which you are inside someone's eyes. And I was thinking of the traumatic memory, you know, what do you remember? You know, the sounds and everything. So I had this whole sort of narrative story line that I wrote and all these gestures, but basically I didn't want to impose. So what I did is that I said, if you want to, you can do this. If you don't want to, you don't have to, and you do whatever you want. And so it was the, the thing was like to not direct, to not make, to not instrumentalize them, to not use them on my, and 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 you know it's it's it was important for me obviously that a crowd is not a word, a crowd is a thing made of people and of faces, and so I wanted as much as I could to make sure that every one of these per pe person with faces would be on camera and there are people who I blurred because they I said if you want to come and be blurred 
if you want to come and show your back. Like, you know, it wasn't like, if you come, you have to be uh, uh, in a close-up and filmed. And, and I think, you know, I guess that my movie and I guess everything I, I do and direct and write is sort of like in this sort of like vibe. I, I have a tendency to love uh, to make sort of like something like sort of a, a reality that's grounded and like and some sort of um, you know more poetic more um, surpr surprising like it's uh, uh, and, and, and I think you know for me what was interesting is the raw ness of this it's like this shot is raw it's a onesie it's like a long shot and and after all this you know sort of like you say you know performance and all these uh, feelings and emotion and sort of then it's like in your face it's there these people are looking at you they exist there's no way around it except getting out of the theater or shutting the tv you know and i think like you can't say you don't know anymore yeah. it's like <laughs> You know, this is, this is like the truth is sort of looking at you, staring at you. And the camera is theirs, which for me is important because the camera can be used as a, a dominant object. And for me, the camera is something they took to, you know, to, uh, yeah. They took control of, yeah. Beautiful. So I, I don't think I could let you go without at least asking you, um, Harvey Weinstein's conviction was thrown out on appeal, and they're going to try him again. How did that make you feel when you heard that? I mean, first of all, I wondered how he had so much money to keep paying for lawyers. Like, it's, uh, I mean, you know, knowing how it works in America, and I obviously I'm, I've lived there, and, you know, um, uh, I, I, and it's very different system, France, you know, French yeah. system and American system. And I was like, wow, this is crazy that he can keep going. And like, you know, I mean, it was a terrible uh, news. It was extremely shocking and sort of like had a feeling of like walking backwards. Um, but I think, you know, this should not be used to sort of like, um, demo you know, demotivate, if that's a word, uh, any women and, and like, and, and, you know, like, yeah, I, I don't, I hope this is not going to be used against victim and, and, and that, you know, he's still convicted in California. Well, yeah, he's not getting out of jail, but, uh, the idea of all of these women having to re testify, uh, seems tough. Yeah. It's, it's a nightmare, a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. I, I can't even imagine like, I mean, it's, uh, you know, and, and that's when, that's when somehow, you know, people like him are winning, you know, it's, it's just what they, w what women are going through. I mean, just that is like enough, uh, pain and, 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 uh, hurt that it should not be allowed. Like, you know, there's a, it's insane to, when you think about it, but you know, it's hard, I think, for anyone to identify really with someone who has to, uh, I mean, listen, I may have to face my abusers. I don't know if one day there, there's, you know, I, I can only imagine, you know, I was, I, I, I don't know how I would have, I would, you have to be so brave to, to do this. It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, in, it's terrible. But you think he should be reconvicted, <laughs> retried? <laughs> I mean, if he could stay uh, in jail in California for the, you know, yeah. then I don't know. I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, there's no reason why this should be it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's the problem is like, what if this is like uh, a statement of like saying we've erased uh, the guilt. He's not guilty. You know, like, mm -hmm. that's the problem. It's like there is a difference between saying, oh, we decided something went wrong or, we, you know, this wasn't done the right way or whatever, but say, but for women it means like, so I wasn't, you know, so yeah. y are you saying he's not guilty? You know, I mean, it's the symbolism because, you know, seeking for justice is such a long, 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 long journey. Yeah. And um, it's not a given. It's not a given. For sure. Well, thank you, Judith, so much thank for you. being here. It's especially great knowing that the history of Khan has also been associated with some of the worst abuses that you get to come back 
at To This Place with a film about justice and celebrating the survivors and telling your story. So really, th thank you so much for, for thank joining us. Thank you so us. much for having me.